since Florida has been moving with the rest of North and South America away from Europe and Africa, we entered these glacial, interglacial cycles, which basically means there are times when the Earth became much colder and much of the water in the atmosphere and in the ocean came trapped in large glacial ice sheets that covered much of North America and Europe. In the interim, we would also alter into interglacial cycles, which basically meant that all these ice sheets melted and sea level came back up and Florida decreased in size and in many cases became submerged. So when it was completely submerged, coral reefs and lots of other organisms would build up what we call the Florida platform, which kind of turned, later turned into limestone and is what most of Florida is built on today. And that platform of limestone is hundreds to thousands of feet thick over much of Florida. At the same time, the Appalachian Mountains, which used to be much, much larger than they are today, began to erode. And much of the sediment that was produced during that erosion actually came to overlay much of Florida, which is where most of our sand comes from, on our barrier islands, on our beaches. As a peninsula, Florida has existed for hundreds of thousands of years. About 22,000 years ago, the west coast of Florida was almost 100 miles further out in the Gulf than it is today. On the east coast, it was at least five miles further out. So this would have been a realtor's dream. It was huge, massive land, uh, open, somewhat arid, wasn't as tropical, wasn't as lush as it is today but nonetheless a great place for people to live with uh, co-inhabiting co with animals, with all kinds of uh, resources. So the last glacial period it was very dry because much of the water was locked up in these glaciers. As we moved into the interglacial stage, which is currently what we're in because we don't have these huge massive ice sheets covering all of Canada, uh, the climate also began to become uh, warmer and wetter in the state of Florida. And this was a mosaic of different environments. North Florida, Central Florida, South Florida were probably quite different from one another as they are now. So this peninsula that we're on, um, it, you know, it has varied in how much has been above sea level over time. So what you get is in the northern part of Florida, you have some more topography and you have these rolling hills. And what that creates is this kind of sand hill, drier kind of forested area. And you get in the bottom of those channels and you get these rivers, these black water rivers, the Apalachicola and, and the Suwannee and, and all these. And interspersed in those rivers are these, are these hardwood bog systems, um, these really kind of primordial swamps. As you move south in the peninsula, you start to flatten out a little bit, but you still have this central ridge which turns into this scrub habitat. Um, and, and beyond that, on the, on the sides of that ridge, uh, you start to get into these vast pine lands, which extend here around the sides of the lake. Uh, and then when you really hit Lake Okeechobee and you get to real true South Florida is where we really flatten out and essentially we become a swamp with a coastal ridge that has that scrub habitat. But everything else is these vast pine lands uh, until you get to the Everglades, which is the river of grass, which is dominated by these swamp systems with these little pine land and hardwood hammock islands interspersed within this vast swamp. One of the, the neatest features in the north area is that um, a lot of that is higher land, not super high, we're talking a couple hundred feet, but 
there are a number of dry limestone caves. There are freshwater springs as you move from the north and down into the central part of Florida um, that we don't have down here. And that's, that area is just elevated enough above the sea level that, that you have fresh water that's been coming from farther north, even outside of Florida. So the coast uh, really kind of changes dramatically, especially on the east coast as, as you come further south. Uh, up in North Florida in the Jacksonville area, these salt marshes, it's dominated by this uh, black needle rush um, in, these, in these salt marshes that have these sinuous channels in them. Tons of oyster habitat up there. As you move further and further south, you get into these vast expanses of estuary uh, like the Indian River, the Indian River Lagoon. And that's where you start to transition from that salt marsh to the mangrove habitat. Um, and we do still have salt marsh down here in Palm Beach County, but we have transitioned to the vast majority of our estuarine habitat is that mangrove swamp habitat that lines the coast. Now, what makes Palm Beach County really cool is we're right on that edge of the subtropical climate and of the temperate zone. So we are right on that transition where you're starting to pick up some of these exotic kind of uh, hardwood species, these tropical species that occur throughout the Caribbean and in, in, in some of Central America. Um, but they're make, they make their way up the coast uh, from the Keys where there's a lot more of this tropical hardwood diversity uh, up the coast into Palm Beach County. We don't have nearly the diversity, but we do have some of those tropical hardwoods making their way up into our county. So all of Florida is uh, zone 9, 10, and all the way down in the Keys is 11. And what that really, the key thing they're referring to is what are the, the average of the coldest temperatures in the, in the winter. So basically, uh, Palm Beach County has a little bit, uh, well, it's, it's all in zone 10, but it has a little bit of an area that is warmer, uh, sneaking right up there along the coast and then encompassing Boca Raton, and a little bit that's a little bit cooler. But pretty much, we don't get a lot of frost. Whereas when you get to uh, central Florida and then especially northern Florida and the Panhandle, they regularly get frost in the winter. Not super hard freezes, like farther north, but they do get frost. You could think of Florida as one big estuary, so that's a transition between a freshwater and a saltwater environment. And the Everglades are one big estuary, and before humans got involved, we had the Everglades in their more natural state, that was almost half the state of Florida, was one big estuary. During wetter periods, we do see, like, more dominant freshwater environments. And we can see in our streams, and our rivers, where we have this transition from a saline saltwater environment closer to the coast to a more freshwater environment further inland that will have more freshwater. And then obviously, when we enter a drought period, where we don't get as much rain, the amount of freshwater discharging through streams may decrease and we may get more of a seawater interaction in that environment.